everyone, Pam Gregory. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the Jupiter-Saturn Great Conjunction that's happening on the 21st of December. Now, the whole of December really is so packed with astrology. It's it's just immense, and, and we're going to feel that. I've talked for months about this being the peak, the crescendo of energy, which has built and built and built really over the whole of 2020. And just a week before this great conjunction on the 21st, we have the total solar eclipse in Sagittarius on the 14th that I talked about in my last video. So check that out because the, obviously the energy from that big new beginning to do with higher mind Sagittarius is going to be running into this period too that I'm going to be talking about today. A lot to say. So firstly, starting just after that total solar eclipse, we have Saturn finally moving out of Capricorn into Aquarius on the 17th of the month, and two days later, on the 19th, Jupiter moves out of Aquarius, and they join together on the 21st to make this great conjunction. Now, there's several reasons that this is particularly important astrologically. Firstly, it's happening on the same day as the winter solstice. That strengthens it. Secondly, it's happening at zero degrees, in fact it's zero degrees 29 minutes, but nevertheless zero degrees of Aquarius, and that really emphasises this right at the beginning, this new start of a new paradigm in this Aquarius energy. The third reason is that it's the beginning of a 20-year cycle, and yes, we have these every 20 years, regular as clockwork, but the way it works is that they, they meet every 20 years in the same element, essentially. We have four elements of water, fire, earth, and air. And they repeat every 20 years in the same element, pretty much. We had, uh, for the last 200 years, this has been happening in earth signs. Apart from one short dart into Libra in 1981, it's happened in Earth signs. So this is going to start a whole new 200-year cycle of these conjunctions every 20 years happening in air signs. And that's very different. It's a much quicker, quicker energy. Things are going to be speeded up. And what do Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions mean? Well, they're very often considered to be generational, and they essentially represent a new world view, particularly when they're shifting elements. So a new world view that's related to our social and political structures, to the culture of the time, to our values, to the economy, that sort of thing, the way society operates. And of course, this shift is emphasised also because we know with Pluto moving through Capricorn, that's representing the deconstruction of the old order, which is continuing. So we know this is just adding to that same theme. So it isn't just the beginning of a 20-year cycle, it's actually the beginning of a 200-year cycle, because these conjunctions will repeat in air. Not only that, but this conjunction isn't just by celestial longitude, which is the normal way that conjunctions are measured, which is kind of the movement roughly going across the ecliptic. In this case, this is also a conjunction of declination. And what that means is that they're parallel, they're conjunct in terms of their distance from the ecliptic as well. So it's a kind of, not just an across measurement, it's, a, it's an up-down measurement too. And that declination conjunction is exact, bizarrely, on Christmas Day, on the 25th of December. So this will be seen in the sky as one bright star, because they'll be so close together. This hasn't happened since 1623. So again, another reason this is so powerful. Now it hasn't happened, this conjunction, in Aquarius, since 1405. And what was happening around 1405, and what was unfolding after that. Well, this was really the beginning of the early Renaissance, which was a huge flowering of creativity, of um, literature, of art, etc. You're all very familiar with that. So we should expect some kind of flowering of our kind of culture. But I think considering where we are in the world right now, it may well be cultural. But 
it will certainly be creative, but I think it will be much more technological. I think we're going to see a surge through these coming years of great innovation, te great new technological leaps, which will be life enhancing, life supporting. Um, going to be all kinds of new ways of viewing our world. I think there are going to be huge changes in the financial system, really radical, and a, a much greater equalization of wealth across the world because we're moving from a paradigm, a worldview of Earth, which has been about density, materialism, capitalism, ownership, possession. You've got to work hard to earn your home or your car or whatever. And there's a feeling of, I've earned this. It's mine. Whereas moving into the Aquarian energy, which is much more collaboration, community, much more to do with humanitarian projects, all of us being in this together, holding hands across the globe, if you like, there's much more of a feeling of sharing, less top down from organisations telling us what to do, much more horizontal and very much mm, society being operated from the grassroots up local communities forming, but also people connecting, obviously digitally, but also in terms of linking up with like-minded people on certain creative projects and innovations. So that's going to feel very, very exciting. So this, and I mentioned this in the last video, this isn't just um, a powerful day astrologically, it really is the convergence of many other systems as well. It's been prophesized in ancient prophecies, the Hopi prophecies, even been talked about in the in the Bible. Indigenous tribes have talked about this, and indeed, some of you may be aware that at Uluru in Australia is a huge rock there, and it's believed that there's a magic box underneath that rock, and they're going to have sacred ceremonies starting late on the 21st. They've pinpointed the 21st for this when they're going to open that magic box and that in turn is going to upgrade our consciousness. We know from the Schumann resonance peaking to crazy levels we haven't seen in our lifetimes and that measures the heartbeat of the earth. That is really signaling this upgrade of the earth and this upgrade in consciousness. I really do believe this is the birth of a new consciousness. This is a portal that we're moving through on the 21st. Obviously, it's going to unfold over the coming months and years, but this is the portal. This is the, we're birthing, we're, we're emerging from the birth canal finally after all these weeks of intensity and contraction. I've talked about all this cosmic and galactic light pouring onto our Earth as we move through the, the photon belt as well. So for many, many reasons, we're seeing this incredible um, jump, really, in which is converging with the Saturn-Jupiter uh, Saturn conjunction on the 20, 21st of December. So not only all these things I've talked about, but this is very much being uh, spoken about by benevolent galactics. There are many people out there on YouTube who channel, very gifted people who channel benevolent galactics. I post some of these on my uh, Facebook page, in fact, but they are all saying the same thing, that we're coming to this crescendo, this peak of energy, which is a, essentially a rebirth for us. And I would just like to really have a shout out, a credit to the very gifted Janet Trelloa. Um, and she channels not a, I don't think, I don't know how he'd feel about being called a galactic, but he, he's an aspect of an ascended master called Zachariah, who has huge wisdom. I followed Zachariah for many years. And um, it, this is organized and uh, wonderfully interviewed by Hazel Newton, interviews Zachariah once a month for a deep dive into Zachariah's wisdom. So I want to credit him because actually Janet, although she doesn't give one-on-ones any longer, she was kind enough to give me a session with Zachariah to ask about some of these um, deep space planets, which I'm going to go come on to talk about in a moment, and to confirm the energies of this time. So shout out to Hazel, Janet and Zachariah for that, and I'll put the link to Patreon below. So you can follow that. So big, big times that we're moving into. This is really signalling, for me, the, the beginning of the age of Aquarius in a bigger way. We will be fully into the age of Aquarius once Pluto moves completely into Aquarius in 2024. By then, I think we'll have a much greater sense of being galactic citizens. And we are going to develop new abilities 
through this whole period, really starting in late December. Now, important to say, they're going to be mass meditations all over the place. You can easily find them online. I'm not running any. I hope to attend uh, one or two, but I will not be running any, so please don't write to me about that. That's not my skill. But the group energy really helps to accelerate this momentum. So many of you on this day will not feel anything. Don't be disappointed and worried if that's the case. Sensitive people will feel a big shift in energy, but whatever you're feeling, it doesn't matter. We are all being upgraded on that day. All of us are being upgraded, whether you are aware of it or not. And over the coming months, we will start to become aware of a different consciousness, a finer consciousness, finer perception, new abilities, telepathy, healing, and, and abilities which currently are even unimaginable for us over the coming months and years. And what's exciting about this, and I talked a little bit about this last time, and again a shout out to the American astrologer Kelly Hunter for doing the research on this, as we enter the 21st of December, we have the sun, and Mercury at zero of Capricorn. The winter solstice is when the sun moves into Capricorn, but they are both conjunct Quawa. Now, I talked about Quawa some months ago in my new planetary archetypes video. This archetype um, is a, a, a Kuiper belt object. Some of them are dwarf planets, but they're kind of beyond the realms of Neptune. The orbits of Neptune and Pluto have very long orbits. Kwawa's archetype is very linked to the indigenous idea of we, we pull matter and manifestation out of the ether. And they talked about singing and dancing to create a coherent vibration to pull the best possible manifestation out of the quantum soup, out of the ether, out of nothingness. So this is very related to the quantum model of how reality works. So that's very exciting. Many of these KBOs, Kuiper Belt objects, are related to this quantum theory of how we create our reality. Secondly, at this big conjunction, we have the moon in Pisces, 27 of Pisces, that is, is at the midpoint of Neptune at 18 of Pisces and Selassia and Chiron at four of Aries. Now, I talked about Selassia in the last video, wife of Neptune, mermaid energy, shape-shifting, shimmering, linked to very high frequency light that shimmers on the seas. Conjunct Chiron, is this about healing via that high, that high quality light? Is this about more of our strands of DNA coming online at this time? This is like a rebirth. This is magical, magical energy. The other beautiful aspect at this time is Chariclo, who I talked about some months ago. Again, beautiful energy. In myth, she was the wife of Chiron. She's related, in my view, to the, the Buddhist ground of being. She has this permanent stillness, this, this beautiful state of being where she can just heal people in that silence by, by her being. And she's a kind of soul, soul midwife because she's also apparently um, there at times of movement from life to death in that transition, but she's very linked also to shifts of consciousness. Isn't that interesting? And she is at the midpoint of Pluto in Capricorn, the old world. She's at 27 of Capricorn. She between Pluto at 23 of Capricorn and the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction at zero of Aquarius. So boy, she's absolutely bang in the middle of the old and the new. She's very much linked to healing and rebirth. Not only that, but that whole grouping, Pluto, Chariclo, Jupiter, Saturn, are all square to Homer. I've talked about many times in the past at 27 of Libra, sorry, 28 of Libra. She is related to the Hawaiian goddess of fertility, and she's a regenerating energy. She's able to just regenerate nature and the earth, even from a state of uh, being laid waste by poor management. She can bring this, this, this rebirth, this creative energy, back into the earth to provide food from the land and the seas, etc. So these are incredible quantum leap energies. They're very much signaling 
a jump in our human, our human evolution. And they're magical. You know, they're not logical. They're not 3D. They're not pushing and efforting. They're just understanding that frequency is everything. And once you understand that you get your energy to a coherent state, you set a clear intention, you create coherence through high vibration, love, joy, etc., and you manifest. You pull it towards you effortlessly. Now, this is the whole 5D view of life, 5D and beyond. This is what we're moving to. However, still we have this, this real split because on the ground, at the 3D level, we have the, this continuing battle and crumbling of the old. On the 22nd of December, we have Mars coming exactly into conjunction with Eris, the female awakener. So he's energizing the female awakener, 23 of Aries. Remember, Mars will give us the inner courage, the conviction, the invincibility um, to stand tall through all of this. Then on the 23rd of December, Mars comes to finally, for the third time, square to Pluto. And that's about might makes right, individual versus the state, but it's the last time. That same day on the 23rd, the moon is in Aries, square to Pluto and conjunct Mars. That is really going to kind of be inflammatory and very combative, very primal at that time. So on the ground, as it were, we are seeing these battles and just the collapse, the crumbling of the old. Whereas if we look to the skies, if we look to that Kuiper belt, those dwarf planets, we are seeing something infinitely different and infinitely magical and exciting, where we can make leaps in in who we are. I think through this period of the next few months, we're going to become, we're going to have a greater sense of our uniqueness, but also a greater sense of being united with all of humanity globally. And um, just to say as well, I think this is going to signal, because there's such a shift in energy at this time, this is going to signal an accelerated collapse and unraveling of the old. So as we go through late December into January and February, I think the, the energy is going to be very volatile and chaotic. Stay in your center. Stay steady. Because this has to happen for us to start to get to smoother waters. We're going to be talking a lot, obviously, more about 2021 as we move into that. But I think things start to look easier and more settled and more almost celebratory freer as we get into March, particularly late March. So a huge amount to say there. Um, feel excited. Also want to say put blinkers on. Absolutely put blinkers on so that um, you're aware of scary stuff, bad stuff happening. But remember your takeoff point, both at the total solar eclipse and on the 21st, has to be at your highest level. Get to the highest airport, which I was talking about last time. Keep your blinkers on. Keep absolutely disciplined, focused on the best you can be, the highest you can be for that best takeoff to create the highest trajectory you possibly can for your future. Because whatever you're thinking and feeling, you are feeding, pulling that future towards you. You're angry and scared, you're pulling that future towards you. That's what you're feeding with your energy. You're joyful and loving and happy and grateful. You're pulling that future trajectory timeline towards you. So you're feeding your future. It's not yet created. We're doing it in every moment. So hope that's been helpful. If you don't know where these uh, points fall in your chart, just check out this link and that will take you to my store. And those videos will help you a great deal. My books, my videos, teaching videos, all on my website, pamgregory.com. And really hope that's been helpful. Hold your vision, hold your faith, feel excited. There's a big shift coming. Bye for now.